on today's episode, we're going to figure out how my budget Airbnb made me over $10,000 in the first month of bookings. Now, stay till the end because I'm going to go over why I bought in that area, what I did to my Airbnb, how much it cost me, how I basically have a free Airbnb because my tenant pays for it, and I'm going to give you ways to market your listing so that you can make $10,000 plus in bookings in your first month. Stick around. All right, so if you are subscribed to the channel, uh, you would have seen the last couple of videos of me starting my first Airbnb. It's a budget Airbnb. If you don't subscribe, or if you haven't subscribed, I think you should, because I'm gonna teach you a lot today, uh, and I'm gonna tell you a lot about how I did what I did, and uh, how you can do the same thing. It's budget, budget friendly. So hit that little subscribe button and let's go. So the first topic that I'm gonna give you is why. Now, the Airbnb that I bought was very cheap and I bought it knowing that it was gonna be an Airbnb. Why? Well, one, because I watch Bigger Pockets and Pace Morby and, um, and they've sort of influenced me to be confident about this real estate investment stuff. And I'm still not there. I'm very, very new to this. I have four doors. One is an Airbnb, three are long-term rentals. So the why. I'm investing in a very, very small town in upstate New York. The town is not a vacation spot. People will not travel to this town to like go to the local sites or whatever. It's just not a vacation town. But what it is, is next to a very, very expensive college uh, and next to a hospital where there's not many towns that are very nice. Um, and also just there's a lot of traveling nurses at that hospital because it's upstate New York and it gets really cold and people don't want to live there. So they travel and they have to hire traveling nurses to come back and forth. So the why, the hospital, the college, price, the property that I bought was $85,000 and came with two houses. I'm gonna get into numbers in topic number two, but that's part of the why. It's because it was budget. Um, three, the university has quite a lot of students. It has about 3,000 students, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have a graduation, a move-in day, a reunion, alumni, a parents weekend, any of those weekends, you get a big influx of people that are coming in, families, parents, uh, sisters, brothers, like students that are coming into a town um, and they need a place to stay. Now, because it is a small town, there's one hotel. That one hotel skyrockets their prices for that, that week uh, and they sell out like basically a year in advance, they sell out um, and they're fully booked. So part of the why was that there was a housing shortage. So that was the why. We had price, proximity to hospital and college. And then furthermore, the college had a lot of incoming guests that didn't have anywhere to stay. So much so that parents, I'll add, were sleeping in RVs in the back of their trucks in tents in the parking lot of the university because they didn't have anywhere to stay. So number two is the numbers. Now the numbers are really, really extraordinary. And I will tell you sort of broader numbers and then go into the macros a little bit. Broad numbers are that the property cost me $85,000. I took a mortgage uh, and I put $20,000 down because it was an investment property. My mortgage for the property, which includes two houses, is $380 a month. Insurance is about $1,000 a year uh, and the property insurance and school taxes together are less than $3,000. So you can see that it's it's budget. It's if all goes to hell, you're not really in that terrible of a situation, right? So numbers. With $85,000, I separate the two houses into the smaller house valued at 35,000 and the bigger house valued at about 50,000. The small house, which I didn't do any work to other than clean it, a little bit of paint, um, and get the carpets like professionally cleaned, rents for $850 a month. It's a 2-1 for $850 a month. 
Now that 850 covers mortgage, insurance, water and sewer, property taxes, uh, and trash, lawn care, uh, and snow plowing. It covers almost all of my bills except for $5. So to recap that, the, small, the smaller of the two houses is rented at $850, and that $850 pays for everything except for $5. So that front house costs me $5 a month, it's like $4.80 to own, if I separate the two houses, right? Because one's Airbnb and one's long-term rental. So that back house is paying for all the bills except for $5. So if I never open that Airbnb, I just close that house down, there's no gas going, there's no electricity, there's no cable, um, that house, just to have it, would be $5 a month. Going into that, um, I renovated that house for $15,000. The reason why it was so cheap was because I did all the work. The reason why it took so long is because I did all the work. Uh, my girlfriend came and she helped. My dad helped when he could. My neighbor helped. Um, about $1,000 of that $14,000 went to him, to the neighbor, um, to help me with plumbing when it was two-man jobs and, and just stuff that I couldn't do. Um, so $14,000 plus $1,000 in labor was my construction cost. $14,000 was kitchen cabinets, oven, range, island, sofas, chairs, uh, TV units, a projector, everything. Everything in that house, the bed frames, the mattresses, the linens. For me to fully be ready to Airbnb that house cost me $15,000. Now, the reason sometimes that I got good deals was because I'm a real good uh, thrifter. I'm real thrifty. So I went to antique fairs that were in upstate New York because there's a lot of them. And I bought a beautiful uh, TV console, like a dresser unit. I'll put it here for $40. The couch was $40. The love seat was free. Amazon. I went to the Lowe's clearance section almost every time I was there, um, but that's how I got $15,000 to renovate the space. So $50,000 with a $15,000 renovation, I have an Airbnb that cost me $4.80 a month that's valued at about $65,000, and that's where I start my Airbnb journey, right? So. The number that made you click this, the number is $10,690 in bookings in my first month on Airbnb. Crazy, absolutely crazy. So a $65,000 Airbnb, my budget Airbnb, made $10,690 in bookings in its first month. Not to be confused with it making $10,690 in one month because you say, all right, 12 times that is making 120 grand on the house. That's not the case. That $10,700, let's say, is bookings that are throughout the year. So I will show you the bookings in the next topic, but just know that when someone says, this is how much money I made in bookings, it's not for that particular month. It could be if it's reasonable, but Usually it's over the span. So topic number three is the bookings themselves and how to advertise your listing to maximize the number that you can get for your nightly rates. And this is what I found. So my bookings, they started cheap. I put a number of about $200 a night and I got that number by looking at Airbnbs in my area. What is a two bedroom, two bath house in a private lot with private parking right next to the university, what does that bring? It's about 200 to $225. So I thought, let me put it at 200. I put it at 200, within 48 hours, I got a booking for two nights. I was psyched, I was so pumped. I was pumped the fact that like, I did something right enough that someone would have the confidence to book at my house. They liked the photos, they liked the location, something I did was right enough for them to spend money to stay in my place. So 
like sort of a, a confirmation there for me. Now, the first booking that I had on Airbnb, they suggested that I do a discount so that I like get my first booking, and I did. So that first uh, that first booking was two hundred dollars a night, and it went down to one hundred and fifty six dollars a night with cleaning, and the fee came to three hundred and sixty dollars. So, really important here. This is one of the most important things. I didn't realize that when you put something on Airbnb, you can change the price, the nightly price, based on whether you have a high season, a low season. You can even go so so much as to just one day. So it makes sense, right? Like you're in a party town, New Year's is really uh, uh, sort of a popular time. You make New Year's more expensive than you make any other days. Thanksgiving, 4th of July, whatever, you know? Um, so I went in and I looked at the calendar on the university. This is really important. I went to the, uh, I think it was called the academic, yeah, the academic calendar for the university that I'm right next to. And I saw when the reunion weekend was, when parents weekend was, when graduation, when like move in weekend was, all those weekends that are really, really popular where there's a huge influx of people. I made the price substantially more for those nightly rates than I did on the normal rate when nothing's really going on. The way that I got that number was I called a hotel and I asked what their nightly rate was for there, uh, for those nights. I called, I didn't call, I went on Airbnb and checked other Airbnb hosts and what they charge. And I found that they charged almost 300% more for those popular weekends. They're cashing in when the parents are in town. We have to, because really it's not a destination place. And the only way that we're gonna make money is to take advantage of the fact that there's so little housing for such a huge influx of people, right? So I changed my price from 200 to 225 for a normal night. And then on those weekends, I went up to $600 for the night. I thought I was crazy, but I saw other people doing the same thing. And I sort of just said, well, if I don't get a listing and if I don't get a, a reservation in a while, I'll just, I'll turn it down, whatever. I didn't. I, I got the weekend that, uh, I, I got graduation weekend, um, two nights at $600, $1,200, $1, maybe a little bit over two grand in three reservations, which is still good. Like in the first month, two grand, whatever. What I did that sort of got me the big money here was I went on to Furnished Finder. Now, if you haven't heard what Furnished Finder is, it's a website that connects hosts and housing with traveling professionals, usually in the medical field. This medical engineer went on Furnished Finder, saw mine, and then went on Airbnb and saw the same one and sent me a message through Airbnb that he was interested in three months. I got 88 nights right here at a hundred dollars minus their service fee cleaning that's eighty six hundred dollars for three months of a stay crazy three thousand dollars a month that's rent in miami beach for a nice place and that's in the middle of nowhere in upstate new york because it's close to a hospital where these traveling doctors and traveling nurses make around four thousand dollars a week for most contracts $10,692.83. That's the amount of money I booked in the first month on Airbnb with my first budget Airbnb. That's it. I mean, that's, that's the video, right? So takeaways, find a location near a hospital, near, uh, if you wanna just do traveling nurses, which is totally like, itself a niche that real estate investors go to, which is something that I might actually just start pushing towards. Find a hospital that has a lot of traveling nurses going in, um, colleges, and then in a town where there's like no hotels. So when the college people come, they don't have anywhere to stay. Second, budget. I wasn't about to put down $150,000 as a down payment and be mortgaging some $700,000 house to like maybe make some money on Airbnb, just too much money. And I just didn't have the confidence to do that. So I started small and $85,000, I think you can agree is a, a very budget friendly starter property. So 
location, price, and then third, take advantage of those popular weekends, adjust your prices, and market in more than one place. Reach out to HR, see what they do when they have incoming people uh, coming in to have meetings or whatever and see if you can make a deal for housing for them. Uh, hopefully those tips are valuable to you. If they are, again, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe. I'm really trying to grow this channel. I love doing this stuff. I'm really getting into it. Uh, thank you, Bigger Pockets and Pace Morby, for for sort of your influence uh, and and teaching us all. And um, hopefully, I'll give you a three, six month, one year update, and the momentum will still be here and we'll still be doing fine. Uh, and if I learn any more, I'll update you there. But take care. We'll talk to you soon.